evening everyone we welcome you all to our team global my name is parvi chawla and i work as a volunteer at adore firstly i would like to briefly introduce our organization adore adore is a global volunteer network of students and professionals motivating youth towards positive action This webinar is just an example of the work that this organization does. So we have Miss Nikichi Akinyemi. She is an ESL mm -hmm. tutor, real estate consultant, customer service manager, and social media manager. So on behalf of Adore, I welcome you all to the Synergy webinar. We have pradeepa so he is one of our admin members and operational in charge of adore before we start i request everyone to turn on their cameras and make this session more interactive those who didn't register can register themselves using the link given in the chat box now without further ado let's kick start So this is our lighting session. Ma'am, now you can start your presentation. Okay. So good evening, everyone. Um. So um, my name is Ntichi Akinyemi, as she introduced. I'm from Nigeria, and I'm a realtor, like she said, and I'm also a tutor. Okay. So I'll be doing a presentation on. the role of media in shaping the perceptions of women okay um so i would like to share my screen now sorry yeah yeah we are sharing okay okay thank you mom is it okay 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 Okay. Um. Sorry for the delay, guys. Sorry. Okay. So, um, this is the first slide, and like I said, I'll be having a presentation on the role of media in shaping perception of women. Okay. So, um, media plays a significant role in shaping our perceptions of women, influencing how we think. Can you hear me? Influencing how we think about gender roles, stereotypes, and equality. This presentation will examine the impact on media on perceptions of women. Okay, so um, the next slide just shows a lady you know, reading a magazine, you know, um, trying to download all the information that she's seen on media. Yeah, so that's what the next. Uh, please, can you? I mean, can you swipe to the next to the next slide? I don't know. I swipe to the next slide. Sorry. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So, so thank you. So this is just a picture of a lady um downloading in the media, like trying to read magazines, you know, um, trying to, you know, see what the magazine is saying. Yeah, so that's what this is showing, like a lady reading the magazine. Yeah, so the third slide, the third slide talks about like media representation of women. Media representation of women. Yeah. So oftentimes, um, in like in social media, like women are mostly. I know, seen in a certain way, I guess seen in a certain way, and they are painted in a certain light. Okay, like sometimes, um, maybe in movies, you actually see like less female, less female leads in movies. You mostly see most male leads in all the movies. Not all movies, but mostly, you mostly see the male leading in most movies. But like in recent times, this has been, you know, improving. Like at least you see some female leads now, but compared to men, you see more 
male leads in the media. Then also, like in music videos, you notice that ladies are often sexualized. They are like barely clothed. You know, most music videos and in some advertising videos, you mostly see that too. And um, when it comes to movies, movies and in some instance, in adverts too, you notice the women are portrayed as you know, caregivers and the men as breadwinners. And also, like I said, in recent times, you also notice that this is shifting. Like you see some ladies that are actually breadwinners instead of caregivers, you know, and you now see some men that are actually the caregivers instead of breadwinners, you know. So the role, the role is actually reversed in recent times. Okay, so that's just like the media representation of women. Um, okay, the other slide, the next slide, sorry. The next slide. Oh, okay. This is just a picture, I mean, a picture depicting like a male lead in a movie. Like in most movies, you see men in recent times too. Um, You also see female leads, but compared to male leads, you get more male leads than female leads. Then the sex, I mean, the other picture is just showing like how lead, well, how ladies are perceived to look in the media. Oops, oops, ah, I sorry. I think I. Oh yeah, the second uh, picture depicts how, I mean, how a lady is usually perceived in the media. Yeah, it's okay, it's okay, the next slide. Sorry. Okay, so this slide talks about impacts on self-perception. Like it talks about the influence media has on, you know, self, yourself. Like media has on like self-perception, like how you perceive yourself, how you see yourself, I mean, how you see yourself as a lady. Like most times, like when you when you go to social media, some information you see and you download might affect your self-esteem. You know, it might make you feel inadequate. Like you don't conform to the standards they put out. And sometimes also you see some unrealistic beauty standards and expectations. Like when you go to social media or, you know, some magazines, you look at pictures, maybe at some beautiful ladies. You know, but most of the, most of those pictures are actually photoshopped. They are not totally real, but this actually impacts you know the way ladies feel, feel thinking that I mean they should attain that level of beauty. But meanwhile, all those pictures are actually photoshopped, like they are not totally real. Then um, another point we have to consider is limited self representation and agencies. Few women, I mean, few women in leadership roles. And lack of diverse percept I mean percept perspectives. So this means that like you see few women in you know leadership roles, like some companies. When you go to some companies, you notice that it's mainly the men that hold that maybe the higher position, then the ladies hold you know um, the lower position. Like some companies, not all companies, but in recent times now, you can also tell that it's actually shifting. You could also see ladies in higher positions and males in lower positions but like still you see the majority of the guys or the men being in the leadership role more than the ladies um okay so the next slide i don't know if i'm making sense <sighs> Okay, so this shows like a lady, a beautiful girl, but she's looking at herself in the mirror, feeling like she's not, um, she's not what you know the media wants it to be. Like she's not enough. Like she's having a low self esteem. She's thinking to herself, you know, what can I do to improve the way I look? Although she's beautiful as she is, but she's still thinking that she needs to fix some part of herself you know, to conform to media standards. So this is just what it's showing. It's very, please, the next slide. Okay, so um, this also talks about impacts, like media roles, I mean, on impact on societal attitudes. So this is like perpetuating gender bias. 
Okay, so what this means is like the media, the social media, yeah, shapes public opinion and attitudes towards women. Example, enforcing policy and perpetuating stereotypes. Like they make it, um, they make it seem like ladies belong to. Uh, okay, like ladies belong to this particular um stereotype. Like this is how ladies should be. You know, like there's no fluidity in it. Like they always paint it as like a lady should be thin, a lady should be, you know, um, you know, beautiful. A lady should, you know, have this and have that. You know, so like ladies, when they consume this media, they will start thinking, oh, okay, like since I I'm not like this or I don't have this, like I have to, you know, try my best to attain some level of media credibility, which is always misleading. You know, ladies should believe in themselves and, you know, trust the way they are, you know, and just, I mean, be content with themselves. Then the second one is reinforcement of patriarchal norms and stereotypes. Okay, example, men as dominant and women as submissive. So this talks about, you know, men being leaders, yeah, and ladies being the followers is always painted like on media that men are always the leaders, they're always the alphas, that they're meant to lead and the ladies are meant to follow. But I mean, it's not written in stone that ladies are meant to be, you know, I mean, followers. Ladies can also be leaders as the men are leaders. And I mean, men can also be followers as the ladies are followers. There has to be a balance, okay? It's not like, it's, I mean, a guy, I'm dominant and a lady, I'm submissive. Yeah, but in recent times too, I mean, there's been some changes in this aspect. Then um, the last point goes to influence on policy and decision-making. So lack of representation in government and on equal pay. So it talks about, um, you know, also um, ladies being seen as the lesser part and men seen as the superior part. You know, that's what it talks about too. Like the men, they go to the men for decision-making and ladies just um, execute the decision that the men make. But also this has changed in recent times whereby, I mean, ladies can also be decision makers. It mustn't be men all the time. So also there's a bit of a balance in recent times. Okay, so um, next slide, sorry. Okay, so uh, this just shows a man in power and the lady is just beside him, you know, like acting as an assistant or, you know, something like that. You can see the man is the, is the person talking and she's just beside him, you know, like an assistant. But like I said, in recent times too, a lady could be the one speaking and a guy can also be the assistant. It mustn't be, I mean, the lady being the assistant and the man being the spokesperson. Also, yes, so that's what it depicts, you know, men being more superior than men. That's what they portray ladies as, I mean, mostly on social media. But like I said, in recent times now, I mean, there's been some kind of balance. So, sorry, the next slide. Okay, so this uh, this is this was where I am. Um, because I was talking about resistance and change. So in challenging media narratives, like in challenging whatever the media is making people believe about women, okay? So um, one, ways to challenge what media is actually making people feel about women is one, increasing diversity and representation in media. Like, um, you know, they should encourage more women of color, you know, on media and also, okay, can you hear me? They should encourage more women of color, um, you know, women of different sizes. No, I mean, no one should criticize anybody because of the way they look, you know, or the way they speak, um, you know, from, I mean, wherever they are from, nobody should be criticized. You know, there should be more awareness on that, you know, on equality amongst women. Um, then the second one is women-led initiatives and activism. There are some groups that have already been formed, you know, to fight for women rights, like Me Too, Time's Up, and so many others, you know. So um, these platforms are anti, anti, uh, anti resistance group, you know, for, you know, uh, women, 
um, like women voices kind of like they amplify women, you know, making people see women in a good light, not in the kind of light the media makes everyone see women in. Um, then my third point is um, alternative media and counter narratives, independent films and feminist blog. I mean, feminist blogs. So um, apart from the normal medias we know, I mean, we should strive to create more media that will encourage women to, like, however they are, like, however they look, however they speak. I mean, that they should feel, you know, content with themselves. You know, they should be themselves. I mean, they can express themselves on screen without the fear of being criticized by the media. Okay, so that's what the alternative media and counter narratives is all about. Um, and it's all, I think this is like, <sighs> okay, sorry about the spelling of the amplifying, sorry, but this just shows the lady, you know, trying to speak up for women, amplifying women's voices. She's trying to voiced out, you know, her concerns for how women are being treated on social media. Yeah, so she's just trying to make people aware that women, that women are, you know, as much important as, as men in the society. You know, as the same women are given the opportunity to prove themselves, that ladies or women should also be given, given the same opportunity to prove themselves. So that's what this is all about. Okay, so conclusion. So this, it's okay. So this is just, you know, what we should do to end gender bias, like to end the narrative the media paints about women. So, okay, like call to action, what we should do, let's challenge and change media narratives to promote gender quality, equality, equality, sorry. So, okay, what we can do you know, to promote gender equality is one, support diverse and inclusive media. You know, we should encourage, you know, um, media, we should encourage media run by women or we should encourage what ladies put out or what women put out without criticizing them. Okay, I mean, women should be encouraged, you know, to speak out and they shouldn't be, um, you know, criticized in critical thinking and media literacy. Okay, these are just this is just the ending part. Um, a group of ladies from different backgrounds, from different cultures, you know, you know, trying to speak up together, we can create change. That's what um picture is all about. So this is the end. And thank you for having me. Um ma'am. I can hear you. Yeah, I have one question. Okay. How do media represents affect women's self-esteem and body image? Do you know, can you type it for me? Can you type the question for me? Yeah, yeah. Is it possible sure. to type it out? Yes, thank you. Okay, so you said, how do meeting representations affect women? When you say meeting represent, okay, how do meeting representations yeah. You mean media, okay, media, right? Media, okay, okay. Okay, for an example, okay, maybe, let me take Instagram for, for an example. Sometimes when you go to Instagram or, or even on TV or movies or what, okay, you'll see all these um, maybe female actors, you see the way they look and all, and maybe the lady in question, you know, um, watching those, um, you know, movies or, you know, going onto Instagram or wherever also wants to be an actress, right? But seeing the standards, you know, created by those social media and movies might discourage her because she's seen the standards, you know, they are portraying, you understand, know, they are portraying on Instagram or wherever, any social media outlet, and she feels she isn't good enough. Mm -hmm. Right, and she feels she isn't good enough, so that you know makes her feel, you know, low about herself. You know, thinking she has to attain some level of um standards before she can even maybe go and audition for that role she has always 
wanted to audition for or maybe shoot a video and post online. She has always wanted to, you know, shoot and post online. So, you know, seeing some some information online can actually affect her low self. I mean, can actually, I mean, actually affect her her self esteem. So most of the time, what we consume on social media, you know, affect us. I don't know if you really understand what I mean, but yes, like sometimes, like when you call, there are some things you will see and you feel like, no, I mean, I won't be able to do this, you know, because of some standards or qualification that has already been set. And you feel like, no, I mean, I, I can't do this. I can't do that you know, because of what, you know, they put out there. But I mean, you should be, I mean, for the lady, you should be self-content and you should know that you should go and do what you want to do, regardless of whatever social media tells you that, I mean, they need to accept you. You know, you shouldn't um, consume all those negative information put out there. Okay. Like, you shouldn't. You should just go ahead and do what you want to do. There's no certain standard that limits a lady from becoming what she wants to become, even though the social media says that you shouldn't. You know, you should put, I mean, put your energy, you know, do what you want to do. Because in some cases, you also see, like, you know, some other women that doesn't conform to those standards, you know, that's been painted by the social media doing well. You know, in whatever they want to do, they do well. They don't listen to, you know, the social media or whatever they say that you should be like before you pursue, pursue what you want to pursue. You should just, you know, follow your heart, do what you need to do regardless. At the end of the day, the media will accept you. That's just how it works. But yes, but at the initial stage, you know, they discourage ladies, you know, because of the standards you know, they put out there that like you should meet some certain standards, but I mean, you should be, you, you should, I mean, make yourself not read into all those meanings because there's no certain standards, you know, for ladies, you should just, just do your best, do what you want to do and everything will fall into place. So that's, I don't know if you really understand me, but. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, ma'am, I have a question. Okay. Uh, so according to you, what uh, emerging trends in media do you think will be more significantly impact the portrait of women in the upcoming years? Yes. Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. But um, I also mentioned, I think at the end of the presentation, um, about, let me check, like um, resistance and change, okay, especially ladies, we should come up with maybe like an organization that is anti-media, you know, perception of women, you know, like we should stand up for ourselves, you know, and make sure like it doesn't affect maybe the future generations already. It's affecting this generation, but to make sure it doesn't, you know, affect the future generation. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I mean, us putting something in place, standing up for ourselves, I'm sure we'll cob cop this in the nearest future. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I can clarify further if you need me to. Okay, ma'am. Mama, I have a question. Okay. Um, how the rise of social media platform change the landscape of women? How would the rise of social media platform, right? Yeah, change the, the perspective of women women okay how would the rise okay like social media is already in existence right so it's even already affecting the perspective of women okay like for example like i said before um maybe when you go on social media or maybe even movies you know movies social media they are all medias okay like, like i said i was just talking about media in general right okay so example as in movies um in some movies the movies you notice that maybe they make the ladies like the caregivers or the house helps okay let me put it like that they are mostly seen as the house helps in some movies especially like all these telenovelas you see them 
you know, being the cleaners and all, while the men are always made to be the rich people, right? So, I mean, when we consume that kind of output, right? I mean, in our minds, we feel like, okay, or people will feel like these are what ladies are only good for, you know, caretakers. I mean, they are not decision makers, you know, they make us look weak, you know, in the eyes of everyone. All right. So that's one of the, ex I mean, that's one way media can actually impact the perception of women. Right. But of course, like I said, in recent times, there's been some balance. I mean, there's been some initiatives targeted targeted against this type of um, you know, outputs in the media, you know, to curb those kind of things. Cause I mean, if a lady can also be a cleaner, a man should also be a cleaner. I mean, it's a two-way street. Uh, but stereotyping ladies in that type of roles all the time, you know, it gives like um like the wrong impression. Okay. So I mean. But men, I mean, whatever a man can do, I mean, a lady can also do it better. You know, same goes. Whatever a lady can do, a man can also do it better. So there has to be like a balance. I don't know. Um, is that okay? Do you want me to clarify? Yeah, ma'am. Okay for me. Thank you, ma'am. No problem. You're welcome. Uh, thank you so much, yeah. ma'am, for hosting this wonderful webinar. Your presentation was both informative and enjoyable. We extend our gratitude to all the participants for joining us today. ADOR is a non-profit organization that offers unpaid internship and volunteer opportunities. Individuals can utilize their time and expertise to support ADOR's mission and various programs, thereby serving the community and making a difference for more information and to apply. It is recommended to contact Adore directly or to visit their official website. We have provided a feedback link in the chat box. Please provide feedback using your registration mobile number. Thank you once again for your participation and contributions to today's session. We are eagerly anticipating seeing you at further events. Thank you. Thank you.